right, Capricorn, what's up? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. This is going to be a general tarot message for Capricorn, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Happy to have you guys with me today. This is round two. I actually posted uh, a video for you guys yesterday, um, and I posted it along with the fire signs because I was trying to get a couple days ahead with my readings, and I got a very unusual reading for Capricorns, um, and so I posted it knowing it's not going to be for everyone. It is very specific, but it felt very important to share, so you're uh, welcome to check that out. It Basically, it was like someone can't take a hint. It had a little bit of a stalker vibe to it, so I mean, I don't mean to make light of that. That's actually why I posted, because it actually was a very heavy message, but I just want to let you know you're welcome to check that one out, but hence the bonus reading. Um, so you guys got two this week, so hopefully this one will be a little bit... Uh, a little bit more general or at least connect with more Capricorns. So as always, guys, general messages, not everything I say will resonate with every single Capricorn out there. Um, so come into this reading with an open heart, with an open mind. Only take away what resonates uh, for you, what motivates, empowers, and inspires you. Leave the rest. Assume it's going out to someone else, okay? Here we go. You're responsible and accountable for all your own actions and decisions. <laughs> all right, so first message coming out here. You definitely have kind of like a spirit guide vibe, um, unless it's your mother or, or your child for that matter, kind of, kind of some strong feminine energy. But to me, that's always like the, the idea of a spirit guide, the one who wants you to honor your inner child and the one who sort of backs you, right, in life, the one who's kind of... I'm almost getting the idea of like whispering in your ear that, you know, you're strong, you're good enough, you're smart enough, you can do this. The one who's almost like your coach. I, I could almost see it as like an athletic coach or, you know, a spirit guide, that type of thing. Um, some sort of decision to give back. Give back uh, your time. Give back the money. I, I don't know what this is. Let's see. You're at a crossroads. <clears throat> some of you, it may involve s spending money you don't want to spend in order to acquire or gain something of, of uh, great significance. Let's see, what's this about? Some of you feel uh, called to go into some sort of spiritual career, um, and I think you're questioning, but will the money be there? Um, and I mean, I don't even know if I have the answer to that. It's not to say it wouldn't be, but it's almost like, well, you won't know until you try. I think you're smart enough, Capricorn, to know that it won't be an overnight success. It won't be a Cinderella story. But I think wherever you put your passion and your effort, if you love it, it won't feel like work. And so you will put you will put that proper time and energy into it and you will see success. You know, I would say almost any Capricorn will will see the result of their hard effort. But it is a matter of time. I think it, it may be slow to start, if that makes sense for any of you. And that could also be anything involving like training or coaching. If you're a life coach or an athletic trainer, or I would say even a teacher, a mentor of any kind, that's a very important message here. It's almost like the major reward you should look at initially is what you would be giving back to others, what you would be giving to your students, to the community, to your trainee. It's almost like a very humanitarian-esque effort, the way of reasoning why this may be a good transition for you if the price tag isn't you know making your eyes sparkle is that because you would be doing some really good work you would be helping people out some of you are going to uh, teach music or, or singing lessons yeah something about musical lessons or something like that you're very passionate about it you're very good at it so why not maybe it's not going to be full time immediately but maybe it's about starting small and working your way up you know ascending that mountain like the capricorn like the true capricorn that you are all right let's um i don't know let's let's wrap that up and then we'll do another one i'm not really getting too much from that it just seems like you're you're at this crossroads of well do i or don't i i don't see any cards saying don't i see cards saying well when are you gonna do it <laughs> right it's like we'll take action you have no choice the two of wands says you must make a decision at some point there's no timeline to it, but I, I get the feeling this is something you've already been sitting on for a long time. And like, you're looking for that extra nudge or inspiration from, you know, spirit, God, source to be like, yes, it's a good idea. You already know the answer to that. Uh, the fact that you feel so inclined to even be thinking about it this much and even possibly seeking a tarot reading on it, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I see the odds are stacked in your favor. Um, there's the emperor card. Always a good card for career. And, and because it's a four, we think of like the four corners of a house. It's about establishing a solid foundation before, you know, you undertake too much work. It's, it's like start off small. I think realistic expectations. You may be getting overwhelmed with the whole picture. But yeah, set up a cozy foundation for yourself. And from there, you can continue to see it grow. There's some quote I like, um, and I don't know if it's necessarily attributed to anyone. Maybe it's more of a saying where it's like, 
Um, creativity really doesn't come without struggle, but it also flourishes when there's safety. It's something like that. So it's like, you have to feel rooted. You have to feel like you have shelter, you have food, you have your, you know, basic necessities in order to be creative. But then at the same time, sometimes those challenges and struggles in our life fuel our creativity anymore. So it truly is like quite literally with the scales, it's a balancing act. I think you could always justify why it's not quite the right timing, but then you're never going to do it. So it's having faith in the divine. And mo most importantly, I would say having faith in yourself. If this is something you love, look, there's mountains in the background, right? They seem so far away right now, but, you know, taking a few steps gets you closer to the prize. It gets you closer to the end game, right? The end goal. So uh, the hermit is that? Oh, no, the four of swords. Will it bring you peace of mind? Or will it do the opposite? Uh, maybe you're resisting this change or this uh, important step because you know it's going to cause a little bit of upheaval. It's going to cause a little bit of, I would just say change or transformation. I would say that's a good thing because uh, essentially you want to do something that you love so that you have peace of mind at the end of the day. You sleep well knowing you're going to, whatever, leave your mark in the world. This could even be about your legacy, right? Um, <clears throat> but essentially, I, I guess I don't hate the fact that you flat out know this is going to be a little bit different. It may be a little bit uncomfortable. You may have to find your footing. But again, you can stay in the tomb. You can stay in this little like coffin thing, but you're never going to grow spiritually. So I think this is about taking a leap of faith and just honoring what is in your heart, honoring what is your truth and moving forward. It's like uh, this goes into the five of swords. So I almost see those. Yeah, it's time to get back on the battlefield. It's time to go do it. Um, what's that movie with Mel Gibson? Braveheart? I, I'm wanting to say Braveheart for some reason. All right, let's, uh, Temperance. I don't know why this is actually hanging out. I think I was going to take a picture of it on my Instagram. Isn't that a cool card? I hadn't decided what I was going to do with it yet, so I, I tucked it out, but I'm going to shuffle it back in. We'll see if it comes out. Uh, it's a card of Sagittarius. It's also about patience and balance, so maybe that was there for a reason. Maybe I was supposed to show you Temperance. So here we are, Capricorn. We're going to try it again with Mermaid Tarot. This deck is so cool. I love the pictures. I, um... <laughs> I was slightly scarred from using it on your last reading because I was just like, what am I reading about? Like, if nothing else, you should check out that reading for entertainment value because it was wacky. Um, and again, it was actually quite a heavy message, but I was just blown away because I was going to do a love reading. So anyway. Oh, all right. You want a love reading. Is that why I just said that? Okay, let's uh, let's talk about what's coming in romantically for Capricorn. Let's see. We already got sort of a career one there. So for those who are interested in love. Oh, no, we're starting off the exact same way. All right. I actually love this card, though. So let's uh, let's not put a black cloud over it until until otherwise proven. So, all right. So six of cups can indicate something coming back from the past. I wanted to say the T-Birds in Greece, something about that leather jacket. It's making me think of that musical Greece with Sandy and Danny. Maybe those are someone's names. Um, all right, so Six of Cups, again, could be someone from your past. It could just be a soulmate. It's typically love that indicates it's kind of sweet. It's kind of cute. It's kind of innocent. This isn't my, like, oh, baby, how you doing card. Like, it's it's not laced with sexuality. It's very cute. It's going on a date. And it's, um, I would say, uh, more traditional in a sense. Um, someone who, I, I don't know, someone who definitely, like, believes in marriage. That's sort of the vibe I get with the Six of Cups, which is fine, but not, not everybody is going to be that way. So let's see. Give me one on each side. Now, the, it could be male and female. It certainly doesn't have to be, but I'm just going to read for the two different people. So tell me a little bit about this person's past. Someone here loves disco or something from the 70s. Again, the, Greece was made in the 70s, right? Or is that, yeah, I think, wasn't Greece from the 70s? I don't know, the movie. That's what I'm referencing. All right, so someone doesn't want to lose you. Potentially a Leo may be coming back with an apology after a tower moment of sorts. <laughs> You're literally getting all the same cards. This is absurd. Um, but it's actually coming out in, in a slightly different storyline. So let's just... Spirit, allow me to tap into a new storyline. I don't want to repeat the other one I did. That was too much. It was literally a, the other day, too. So anyway, sorry. Okay, here we go. Tell me about this person on this side. Possibly the female involved here. Let's see. Hierophant. All right. Temperance. Hey, she came out. See? It was faded. It was meant to be. Judgment and the Empress. <clears throat> holy cannoli all you have aside from the six of cups is all major arcana meaning like the big boys the big players the important cards like the significant moments in life so some of you may be already married if that's why the hierophant is coming up maybe possibly to a taurus a sagittarius an uh, i almost said an empress um no a taurus or a libra this is a card of venus it's a uh, Planet Venus, it's representing love. A really beautiful card. This is actually one of my favorite cards in the deck. I just think it's so pretty. 
Um, and then judgment. Let's see. Judgment, again, going back to the past. So again, for a lot of you, you never have to go back to the past. Of course, you have free will, but it does kind of seem like this reading is steered more in the direction of, let's see, of the past. Yeah, some of you may actually getting be getting proposed to. I mean, this guy's down on one knee, so, and then you have the hierophant, so marriage. Temperance is sometimes the pairing of opposites, the blending of cups, but it's done in a very, very divine way. It's all about patience. It's about balance. It's about, um, what is the word? Moderation. That That's a good word. I, the way I said, like, innocence or tradition, something about modesty. I, I'm, I almost got a storyline about someone who maybe is waiting to, like, physically act upon this union until marriage, if you get what I mean, like somebody who doesn't believe in sex before marriage. Obviously, that's not for all of you, Capricorn. <laughs> You're like, that's not me. Um, but no, for some of you, you may have, if it's not that, it's it's a person who just, they have, they very, they have a very traditional stance or, or viewpoint on marriage and union. And yeah, it's like there's a by the book thing, they have to do it. And maybe that tested you, especially, and that could be you as well. You may have been dealing with a Leo who was a little bit atypical or untraditional or someone who almost like a little rebel wild child that's why greece is coming up okay thank you spirit the idea of like the pairing of the opposites right sandy's like this you know little poodle skirt girl and danny's like the bad boy t-birds whatever right again metaphors symbols i'm not saying that's exactly what's going on here but that's sort of the vibe i get there's like this sweet innocent i think it's the female who's just like giggling with her girlfriends and i don't know it, I, there it's almost like you caught feelings for the bad boy or something like that and I think it's possible you guys may have had a tower moment. Maybe you tried time apart or there was just trouble in paradise. There was something where, it, I don't know, I'm wanting to say instead of surrendering to divine timing, it was trying to force something to fit, like two puzzle pieces that at the time just didn't go together. It's very possible this person may be uh, following up or revisiting to see if you're still interested. And it might just lead to marriage. I mean, obviously it won't be for all of you, but yeah, especially with a fire sign, an Aries Leo Sag, um, yeah, there may be wedding bells for, for you and Capricorn. <clears throat> and if that's the case, uh, I know I'm kind of jumping ahead. These are just supposed to be like small weekly readings, but this could potentially be someone that you have children with. It, it immediately goes from marriage to the empress, which uh, does have to do with pregnancy and fertility and motherhood. So... I don't know, maybe that was a, a point of discussion of, well, I want kids and I don't want kids. And it almost seems like maybe some of my Capricorns sent this person packing because they're like, listen, this is what I want. I want to be a mom. I want to start a family or whoever. It could be the male figure too. But someone was very traditional in their, their trajectory. And I, I guess I'm wanting to say it's Capricorn because it's very like, I have a 10-year plan. And like, that's sort of what I like. There's, there's very much a, a plan in place of, of your future. And so here's what I would offer. I think this is about compromise. I think that's what this card also represents is the the resistance, or I'm sorry, the need to release control of every little thing. I think it's great to have a plan. I think it's great to have the flexibility to break away from that plan as well. And I think that's what you guys offer to each other. While you may have... A, um, I'm hearing credibility. That's funny. Uh, you may have, again, like kind of your ducks in a row. You you have your shit together. They always joke that Capricorns, that you know, they're like old souls, you know, age 16 and they already have like they're a financial advisor and a therapist. And like, do you know what I mean? Like they have, they have everything in a row. This person may not. And so I would offer that you offer that to them in terms of thinking long term and um, planning organization. And then this person may offer you kind of that edge or that um what's a good word for it uh offer you the appreciation of a quality of sometimes it's just okay to be loosey-goosey sometimes you don't have to know everything and i think in a way that's what i love about this union is because there's balance it, it really is in a sense the blending of opposites and i don't even mean that in terms of zodiac signs you know it can be any zodiac sign but there's a there's give and take there's push and pull that i would offer even with the push and pull moments that can be quite annoying or frustrating there's so much value to be gained and understanding like Again, I'm just wanting to say control issues, making a mountain out of a molehill, and then you realize, oh, you know, like, it, you know, my stance on that really isn't as important as I thought it was. This relationship allows people to adapt and to grow into, like, the highest vibration of, like, their, their spiritual being. I know I'm throwing a lot of, like, big words at you there, but, yeah, I, I actually do like this. Um, I'm curious about this tower. I just want to know a little bit more about that. 
Yeah, I see some of you uh, talking about big plans. Some of you may even have the uh, foresight or the sixth sense. If you've been with this person or whatever, if any of this is familiar, some of you may be anticipating a proposal. Like I see you talking with like your girlfriends or your guy friends or however, probably your girlfriends if I'm being honest. But um, yeah, like, oh my God, I think <laughs> like I think tonight's the night. This sounds like a rom-com. I never mean to read it like that, but it, it's funny. Sometimes those messages come up and it really is kind of like a storybook. So look at that. Maybe your your ten year plan did did uh, get you kind of what you wanted. But I would I would offer there is there's a great sense of growth in breaking away from absolute of of needing to know every detail and needing to be so precise and meet meet almost like this uh, significant milestone on this date. I think you've come to realize that you're really not in control of everything. It's about kind of co-collaborating with the universe. And the universe will give you what you need. It won't always be what you want. But in, I mean, I don't even know if I believe that because I think you're really going to love what the universe hands to you. But there, there's a need to release control a little bit. Um, and I think that would do wonderful things for your mental health. And I do see, ooh, my door's slamming. <laughs> Maybe that was a sign. The wind is taking it. Ooh, it's going to slam again. We're, we're just going to go with it. I do see something here about musicians and a wake up call. I think, yeah, for a lot of you, it seems like there was a breakup or a, you know, trial time apart. And I think in time you both, this is actually really similar to the Sagittarius reading I did. So if you're dealing with a Sagittarius, highly recommend you check that out. There is something here about uh, this realization or this awakening, this dawning that, you know what, like, even though it wasn't perfect with that person, it was perfect enough. It was like the things that I was really fighting for in the grand scheme of things I've come to realize they're not as important as I made them out to be. It's like areas where you realize you're willing to compromise a little. And it's not the big things. It's not your values. It's not your morals. It's like, it's kind of like little petty things, petty arguments. I think at one point in time, those were such a big deal. But yeah, there. I just, I don't know. I, I kind of like this. When temperance shows up, it usually means it's divinely guided. Again, the hierophant, which is like God, source, spirit, universe is coming up. Six of cups to me. I tend to like this card more than other tarot readers. I know a lot of tarot readers think it points to like um, karmics, but not necessarily soulmates. I do view it more as soulmates, but I, I would even argue because Six of Cups is typically shown as the past, yesteryear. Yes, we can sometimes romanticize the past, but if it's showing up with judgment, I almost think it's saying there's value in going back to the past and realizing just how much you've changed as a person and understanding that maybe you've made more room in your life to accept this person as they are and vice versa. Um, I like this. And again, uh, the Empress, whether it represents motherhood or not, it's planet Venus. Like you have to have love in a relationship and boom, you're getting the love card. So yeah, judgment is like welcoming someone back in or welcoming someone to the family. You may be, yeah, I, I, I think wedding, wedding is in order here or some sort of significant milestone in a relationship. And if you're not there yet, this could just simply mean that you are bridging the gap of like an awkward moment that happened in your relationship. And the thing is, it's made you stronger. Going through those trials and tribulations as a couple, I, it, it's, it's, I don't know, it shows strength of character that you still love this person and you're wanting to fix it. Compromise. This is all about compromise. So what is this tower? You may have lost your patience with someone because they chose to leave a job that was providing them stability, but their heart wasn't in it. So they, they honored their truth, but you may have felt some type of way about it. Yeah, you can't control other people. That's been an important lesson for you in life, Capricorn. Um, and, and you don't look at it as controlling. You look at it, no, 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 but I'm looking out for your best interest. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I would say that's totally true. I think that sounds nice in theory, but I think you were looking out for your best interest too. Um, so just be cognizant of that, right? I'm not here to, you know, beat you up or be mean to you. But yeah, you can't control what other people do or say or think. In theory, if you're, you know, a couple married, established, hopefully there's a, uh, open lines of communication, open channels for communication for long-term goals. But I mean, if this person's heart isn't in it, then they have to live their life for them or else they're always going to be really unhappy. When you start living your life to please other people, that's like a one-way ticket to Disasterville. Um, and so I think you're starting to understand that. And again, for a lot of you, it seems like a negotiation you're willing to work with is to release a little bit control over their, especially their career path. It's almost like you fancy yourself a life coach and you're trying to like fix your partner. And again, I would really discourage that because I think that's like mixing business and pleasure. 
Um, it's not impossible, but it's putting weird pressure on your person because they want to listen to you as their wife or as their husband, but not as their like financial uh, coach or, you know what I mean? There, there's something about, yeah, that's going to muddy the waters. So like, let's separate the two. You know, if this person needs, um, whatever, like some sort of career counseling or training or like, let them seek that outside of the house or outside of your romantic partnership, because it's, it, it's, it's muddied. It, that's not the right place for that. So Yeah, stick to your own grind, stick to your own hustle. And if this person asks you for help, by all means, but I, I get the idea that that was like a stressful, that was a stressful thing between you guys. Yeah, mum's the word. I think there, and this may have to do with your person too. This isn't all about you. There's something about someone needs to learn to, to bite their tongue a little bit more. And again, it's not the important deal breakers in life. It's like little nitpicky things that someone is very, especially a fire sign. Fire signs can be very blunt, right? We love their honesty, but sometimes it's like, can we cushion it with a little bit of kindness? And, and I would say earth signs are the same way too, right? You know, it depends on the person, but someone needs to learn to control their mouth. Uh, almost like... I hate this expression, but I think it's funny. It's like the idea of like verbal diarrhea. It's like it just comes and it all comes out, right? Like there's no stopping it. I know that was gross. I'm sorry. But that's the vibe I get is somebody got themselves into trouble by oversharing and commenting on every little thing in their person's life. And I think in some ways it came from a place of love, but it got kind of misinterpreted and misconstrued of, well, why are you attacking me? Why am I not good enough for you? Why are you judging me like this? You know what I mean? I think mom's the word in some areas of life. I think this could work. I think you guys make a good team. But yeah, someone needs to come away from the illusion that they're going to mastermind their person's career or, or something like, uh, what is that expression? Um, uh, there's a certain word I'm looking for. I know it's going to come to me. What is it? What is that word? Unsolicited advice. Unsolicited advice. That was the downfall in this relationship for a lot of you out there. And so again, totally fixable. It's like choosing your battles, picking your battles, right? Knowing when when is, is a good time to jump in with a little bit of wisdom and guidance and knowing when it's okay to allow your person to try something. And I don't want to say fail because I think that's already a pessimistic attitude. Allowing your person the, the freedom to go off and do that thing, even though you may have trepidations about it, as long as it's not in impacting your finances or your family. It's like you have to give this person a little leeway or else they're going to feel suffocated. And I would say it goes vice versa because you may be feeling stifled in a relationship where maybe you're Leo. It's like it's too much. It's too oppressive. So balance. That's exactly what temperance says. But yeah, I mean, you have really good cards here. Um, I don't hate the tower. I mean, I'll be honest. I don't love it, but I think you guys already know exactly what that is. And if you don't, maybe it's not your reading. Uh, you know, if you're completely single and looking, it's very likely you're actually going to get into a committed relationship. But know in advance, it's not going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's going to be like, <laughs> I just saw something on Instagram about this. What was that? Oh, I wish I could find it. I kind of want to look it up, but it's not worth it. Anyway, um, it's not always going to be like smooth sailing. It's not going to be easy, but know that the challenges you face as a couple will make you stronger individually, but also as a couple. So yeah, work your way through the work your way through struggles. But uh, I like this. I, I think this is good. Um, again, in terms of major arcana, major fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sag, high priestess can represent cancer. The empress again could represent um, Taurus, as does the hierophant. So double down on Taurus and possibly some Libra energy too. Um, very likely, um, if it doesn't have to do with kind of soulmate energy, though I would argue it probably does, very likely someone from your past. You're probably already kind of familiar with who this is, but if you're not, hey, maybe it's coming in, all right? Capricorn, this was much uh, much more lighthearted than my last one, so I hope this speaks to some of you out there. Um, do let me know what you think in the comments below, what resonates, and thank you for joining me here on my channel today. I will see you next Wednesday for more tarot. Bye, Cap.